Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Our praise belongs to Allah, the nurturing Lord of all that exists and He alone is deserving of it Ahmaduhu Subhana I praise Him, the one who was exonerated beyond defect and imperfection Hamdan Kathiran The praise that is abundant Qayyiban Mubarak and Fihi That is pure and blessed وأصلي وأسلم على نبينا محمد I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise the honor and rank of and grant security and peace to our Prophet Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'i and upon his family and all of his companions wa atabahihi ila yawm al-deen and his followers until the day of judgment wa sallama tasliman mazida amma ba'du as for what follows that we praise Allah tabarak wa ta'ala who has facilitated for us the occasion to come together in one of the houses from the houses of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala here at Masjid ibn Mubaz in South Philadelphia in the city of Bi'idhnillah, brotherly love <laughs> we say may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask Allah ya Rabbi thubayna khuroobi ahlin haq ahlin sunnati wal jama'ah to connect between the hearts of the people of truth the people of the sunnah wal jama'ah because that is the only way that the nickname of the city could ever be true, because there is no unity except upon the truth. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He said, That those who have deep love for each other will hate one another and be enemies of each other on the Day of Judgment, except for the people of Taqwa. And Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He said in Surah Imam, He said in Surah Imam, He said, Jalla Sha'nu, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is status be exalted and venerated. He said, Tabarak wa ta'ala, about those who believe and do righteous deeds, and he, Sayyaj'alu lahum rahman wudda, and Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala will cause deep love to exist in their hearts towards one another. And so, we ask Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala at the commencement of this sitting, and he, during this seminar in which we are studying this tremendous book, the book Kitab al kabair by the Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, rahmatullahi alayhi, may Allah shower him with his mercy, to make us of those just tabi'una al-qawla fi tabi'una ahsana. We hear what we hear and follow the best of what we hear and to know that the basis of all goodness in this world and the hereafter is religious knowledge. The affair of al al Musharri and he is that which raises the honor of people, and he, the person is upon the haq, he is raised and he is elevated. As Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, he said, That either us or you are elevated upon guidance, or we are immersed and, he, and he surrounded by clear misguidance. So the person who is upon guidance, the more he is upon guidance, he is and he elevated in status and he is honored in the estimation of Allah Ta'ala. And the more a person is upon misguidance, the more they are surrounded by the misguidance. And deeper the deeper they plunge within the misguidance and the deeper they plunge into the abyss of destruction of our radar, of peril, more and more. And so, this affair that we are going to cover today, which is Babu Maja'a Fil Qawri Allahi Bila the chapter of what has been stated about speaking about Allah without knowledge, is something that people really need to internalize and take to heart. It is something that, without a doubt, is one of the most important of affairs. And he, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has sent the, re, the revelation for guidance from mankind. The entirety of the religion is based upon knowledge. And so when a person speaks about Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala without knowledge, then this person is munaqad, and they are at odds, and they are contradicting the, one of the greatest objectives of the Sharia, which is to ground guidance and directly connect guidance to the affair of the wahi, of the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kitab al-sunnah. 
So this affair is of great importance. It begins with the statement of Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, may He be blessed and exalted the Most High. قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا وَمَا بَطَنْ The statement of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, the blessed and exalted the Most High, who said, Say, in Surah Al-A'raf, verse number 33, Say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّي That my Lord has forbidden the following things. And in the statement of Allah, إِنَّمَا In general, إِنَّمَا any of this word, any of this uh, statement, and it contains within it the emphasis of Ithbat, and it contains within it Nafi. So it is Nafi and Ithbat. It is from the most clear forms of negation and, affir and affirmation. And what it means is that something, what is mentioned after it, is only what is mentioned after it and nothing else. And it is only what is mentioned after this word in Nana and nothing else. But that will be problematic for us here. Because that would mean that all of the Muharramans are found within these five things that are mentioned in this verse. Which is technically they are. Technically they are. Right? And however, and if a person was to come and say, Allah said, Qul in Nana Rabbi, and that my Lord has made the following things forbidden. And then they have something that's a modern day issue, I think something that's new that people never experienced in the past. And it's something I mean, that has some clear evil connected to it, and so on and so forth. And it's not mentioned in the verse. And everything that's forbidden is mentioned in this verse, in the umum, in, in the generality of the verse, in the generality of the verse, قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّي أَنْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ Say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah has only forbidden the following things. And in, why is beautiful that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has phrased it as such? It's to show us that that which is forbidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forbidden because it is of a detriment to us, it is of a harm for us. And so Allah hasn't forbidden anything that will benefit us, forbidden anything anything that has an overwhelming benefit for us. Everything that is forbidden is as is mentioned in this verse. And the al fawahish ma'ala minha wa ma batan. Yani al fawahish are Lewd acts, generally of a, usually of a sexual nature. When you hear the word fahisha, it is usually something of a sexual nature, but it's not exclusive to it. Allah Ta'ala spoke about fahisha in the Quran, referring to bukhul, and he referring to stinginess and greed. And in the word, and he fuhsh in the Arabic language is tajawuz al had and it is a person going beyond the proper bounds. There's fuhsh and tafahush in a person's statements, for example. A person can be fahish in his words, and by being obscene, using obscenities, and speaking any words that are munafira, and he be la mubarrir, a person using words that run people away, and, and he cause hatred and dislike, and so on and so forth between people without justification. This is called fuhsh. It's called fuhsh. And al fawahish are disgusting acts. They are disgusting acts, disgusting behaviors. Ma dhahara minha wa ma batan. And he specifically, it refers to acts of a sexual nature. In this verse, Allah Taala goes with tadaruj, and he with he goes in stages from that which is adna, and that which is least, to that which is akhtar, that which is most dangerous, that which is most dangerous. And he begins with al fawahish. He begins with al fawahish, and this is not to Light in the affair of al fahisha And what is mentioned in this verse, it escalates from that which is least to that which is worse. Well, ithma wal baqiya bi ghayr al haq. Second is sin and transgression without a right. Sin and transgression without a right. The third, wa an tushriku bil lahi ma lam yunazzil bihi sultana. 
and in that you ascribe partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as regards his right to his name, his attributes, his actions, or his right to be worshipped. That you ascribe partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you make partners for Allah in any of his rights by assigning his khasais, any his attributes of perfection to other than him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in any way, or by ascribing his right to be worshipped, tabarak wa ta'ala, to other than he, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the worst and most dangerous of these things, the most dangerous of all these things is is speaking about Allah without knowledge. So that may be problematic for somebody. Or how can speaking about Allah without knowledge be more dangerous than Shaykh bin Nahi subhanahu wa ta'ala? The question is for the four. How can it be more dangerous? Nobody? The affair of... I would say it would be more uh, dangerous because when you, when you speak uh, uh, without knowledge about the law, um, your words could be lying on certain things that uh, you may say that the law said and it could be incorrect. That would be more harmful than Absolutely, a person who speaks about Allah without knowledge is lying on Allah. And he's lying on Allah. A shirk. What did Allah say? Allah has revealed no authority for. So the cause, Allah has indicated in this verse that the cause of shirk itself is al qawlu ala Allah is speaking about Allah without knowledge. Speaking about Allah without knowledge. And so people who took an approach to their religion of opinionation and just interjecting and launching their opinions and their ideas and so on and so forth without any validation from their religion. If that sort of approach to the religion is what led the Muslims to the condition of their end today, where the Muslims are denying the attributes of Allah Ta'ala Ta'ala, the Muslims are ascribing partners in worship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, or those who say that they are Muslims are ascribing partners in worship with Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, whereas regards the affairs of the ahkam al sharia and the rulings of the religion of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, and he, there are many Muslims, um, perhaps a majority of Muslims on the earth today, who would rather, and he, as regards the rulings of the sharia, pertaining worship and interpersonal dealings with business transactions, like marriage and divorce, and so on and so forth, they would rather blind follow the statement of somebody from the past whose statement may be based upon a scholarly opinion that there is evidence contrary to. That there is contrary that there is evidence contrary to. And this person, and he by doing that, he is not basing his religion upon the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by definitively saying that this is Islam that this understanding he has of Islam, that didn't come from the book, and didn't come from the Sunnah. By definitively saying that this is Islam, then this person is basing his religion upon a lie. So if Islam is the cause of every goodness and guidance and protection and, and the all good in this world and the hereafter, and a person is practicing something that they think is Islam, that is really not Islam, or they're practicing some things that they think are Islam, Right? And that those things are not really Islam, and there's not, and there's no doubt that this is from the affairs that destroy the religion. These are from the affairs that destroy the religion and they destroy the Ummah of Muhammad. So every affair of karat and evil and vice and crime and so on and so forth. And it emanates from people speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowledge. It is the core of every evil. The core of every evil that people speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowledge. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, he said, Man allamahu Allahu ilman falyu'alimhu al-nas. Falyu'alimhu al-nas wa iyyahu an yakuna ma la ilma lahu bihi. Falyakuna min al-mutakallifin. Falyakuna min al-mutakallifin. 
by Yambo Kamine Din. And it is ascribed or attributed to Abu Musa al-Ash'ari that he said, and that whoever Allah has imparted knowledge, meaning of the religion to, then let him teach it to the people. And 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 I warn him from saying, what he has no knowledge about, let say he be from the people of Takalluf, and he from the people who and he engage in that which is uh, and he and he the people who are overburdening themselves. And he and as a result of that exits out of the religion or exits away from the religion. And so this is a tahriya. The great scholar, Abdul Rahman al-Mu'allimi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, when we look at all the categories of shirk and kufr, and they are all built upon one thing, which is al-kadibu Allah, lying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the person who lies upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowingly, he knows that what he is saying is a lie against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no doubt that this person is in a situation of destruction. And this person, and he is at jeopardy of exiting from Islam. With his Sahih, and in the Sahih of Bukhari and Muslim, both Bukhari and Sahih of Muslim, from the Hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhuma, raised to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, Allah blessed be he exalted the Most High, لَا يَقْبِضُ الْعِلْمَ انْتِزَاعٍ يَنْتَزِعُهُمْ يُقُرُوبَ الرِّجَالِ Does not take the knowledge by snatching it out of the chest of men. وَلَكَنْ يَقْبِضُ الْعِلْمَ بِقَبْضِ الْعُلَمَ وَبِمَوْتِ الْعُلَمَ But rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the knowledge through the death of the scholars. حَتَّى إِذَا لَمْ يَبَقَى عَالِمْ Until no scholar remains. And it doesn't mean at all in the earth. And because of Prophet Sallallahu he said, They will never cease to be a goof from a nation victorious upon the truth. And he, but until there is no scholar remaining, meaning in a particular area, and the people would take ignorant people as leaders. And they will be asked, and they will give fatwa without knowledge. And they will go astray and lead others astray. A Shaykh Hosan, Hafidullah, who he says, Hadha al Babu jaa ba'da bab al Kadibi ala Allahi ta'ala, or ala Rasulihi sallallahu wa sallam wa alayhi. This chapter comes immediately after the chapter of the major sin of lying upon Allah or upon the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa dhalika liyana al Qawla ala Allahi bila ilm. And that is because speaking about Allah without knowledge is included within the affair of lying upon Allah. But the person in general who speaks about Allah without knowledge does not intentionally lie per se. He is not, and he just by speaking about Allah without knowledge, intentionally lying. But he generally says what he says out of ignorance. When Kadib Ayan Sabal Insanu Ayan Ayan Sabal Insanu or Muta'amidan Shayanam Yarid Anilahi Wala Ar Rasuli Sarvatullahi Sarah Mahari Muhadam Ahbati and Wai Kadib. He said and lying is that a person intentionally attributes something to Allah or to the Messenger وسلم, that has not been authentically conveyed from Allah from the Prophet Sallallahu and this is from the most disgusting, filthy types of lies. And speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our knowledge is included within the issue of lying upon Allah because the person who speaks about Allah without knowledge does not have the mu'ahalat and fatwa. He does not have the necessary skills for fatwa, the necessary ulum, the necessary sciences and knowledges of the sharia. 
to issue fatwa. Any of religious knowledge wa ma'rifati ahkam al deen and he had awareness, keen awareness of the rulings of the religion. Fayaqur, Hadha Halal wa Hadha Haramun mi ghayri al. So a person may say that this is halal or that is haram without knowledge. Wa inna ma'tamada fi dhalika ala ra'ihi. And he merely relies upon his opinion in doing so. Wal aslu an la yuqala an illahi illa bi al. Wal aslu an la yuqala an illahi illa bi al. And the basis of the matter, the fundamental as regards this subject is that Allah is not to be spoken about except with knowledge. ولا ينبغي أن يحلل أو يحرم بغير علم And it is not befitting that anything be declared to be halal or haram without knowledge. لأن القائل بذلك إنما يتكلم عن الله وعن رسوله Because the person who speaks about the halal and the haram is purporting to speak on behalf of Allah or the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَهَذَا يَنْبَرِ عَلَيْهِ أَحْكَامٌ شَرْعِيَّةٌ وَثَوَابٌ وَعِقَابٌ And what comes as a result of what is halal and haram are religious rulings and rewarding punishment. فَإِذَا لَمْ يَكُنْ عَنْدُهُ عَلْمٌ فَلْيَسْكُتْ So if a person doesn't have knowledge, then they should be silent. If a person doesn't have knowledge, then they should be silent. وَاللَّهُ جَلَّ وَعَلَى قَدْ جَعَلَ الْقَوْلَ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ غَيْرِ عَلْمٍ فَوْقِ الشِّرْكِ Shaykh Fawzan, he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the affair of speaking about him without knowledge above the affair of a shirk. وَلِهَذَا أَوْرَلَ الْمُصَنِّفُ رَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ قَوْرَهُ تَبَارَكُ تَعَالَ For this reason, the author, he brings the statement of Allah تَبَارَكُ تَعَالَ in Surah and Surah Al-A'raf, verse number 33, the verse that we heard, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after mentioning what and to shriku billahi malam you nazil bihi sultana wa anta kulu ala allahi malam ta'alamun after mentioning shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned speaking about Allah with our knowledge faja'anahu fawqa shirk shaykh hozani he says so Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he has made the affair of speaking about him with our knowledge above shirk imma yadullu ala khuturatihi think about the hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the hadith of sahih muslim Hadith of Iyad ibn Himar ibn Mujashiri, where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said, وَإِنِّي خَرَقْتُ عِبَادِ حُنَفَاءَ كُلَّهُمْ فَأَتَتْهُمُ الشَّيَاطِينُ فَأَجْتَالَتْهُمْ عَدِينِهِمْ وَحَرَّمَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ مَا أَهْلَلْتُ لَهُمْ وَأَمَرَتْهُمْ أَيُشْرِكُ بِي مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ مَا لَمْ أُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said, that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said, Hadith Qudsi, and he that I indeed, indeed I have created my slaves Hunafa, I have created them as Hunafa, as people of monotheism. فَأَتَتْهُمُ shayateen, And then the devils came to them. We know ten generations passed from the time of Adam to Nuh. Every Qarun from his Qurun, every generation was upon Tawheed. And the devils came to them, right? The devils came to the creation. Even in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu the scholars of Arabic history and Islam, they say that the first one to introduce shirk in the Arabian Peninsula, uh, or in the Hijaz in particular, in the lands of the Arabs, in the Hijaz in particular, was Amr ibn Hayy al Khuzai, right? Who lived around 300 years before the Prophet Sallallahu meaning that the Arabs, in the land of the Prophet Sallallahu they were upon Tawheed all the way up until just 300 years, meaning 300 years after Isa ibn Maryam, the Arabs in Mecca, in particular, they were still upon the religion of Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam. Inni khalaqtu ibadi hunafa'a kullahum. The Prophet Sallallahu and he's speaking about mankind in general, and then speaking about his people, and he, or Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala rather, in the Hadith Qudsi, and he here he said, I have created all of my slaves Hunafa. What happened? What caused the people to leave the Deen Hanif, and the religion of monotheism? Atatum al The devils came to them. 
right? And they diverted them away from their religion. And they made haram for them what I made halal for them. And then they ordered, furthermore, they ordered them to make shirk with me that which I have revealed no authority for. There's no authority for shirk, no logical, scriptural, any type of authority. It's against the fitra, it's against the logic, it's against everything that has ever been revealed from the heavens by Allah Ta'ala for the guidance of mankind. Right? Look at what was mentioned together. What's mentioned together? Shirk and what? Yeah, he's lying and speaking about Allah Ta'ala. Huh? Huh? Shaykh al Islam Taimi Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said, These are the two principles that the entirety of shirk and innovation are built upon. The entirety of shirk and innovation is built upon what? Making haram what Allah has made halal and what? Speaking about Allah with our knowledge, Madam Munazib bin Sultan, and that which I reveal no authority for. Tayyib. And so the affair is jiddan muhim. It's very, very important. We say to our brothers and to our sisters on Twitter and on Facebook and, and he, through our text messages and so on and so forth, not to say a word about your religion unless you are certain that what you are saying is true. Because today, when you push send, your message can hit Europe, it can hit Australia, it can hit New Zealand, it can hit anywhere by a retweet or by somebody just merely viewing your page and information can get passed. It could be a person that is not just spreading lies throughout the earth, you are spreading lies against the law of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the earth because you're not careful. He said, فَجَعَلَهُ فَوْقَ الشَّرْكِ مَا يَدُلَّ عَلَى قُتُورَتِهِ And this is from the fact that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has made, speaking about him without knowledge, and he is that which indicates the danger of the affair. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى إِنَّ اللَّهِ إِزَاتَ بِهِ الْمَوْسَعِهِ He said, وَلَنْ تَقْفُوا مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عَلْمٍ In Surah Al-Isra, he said, and do not involve yourself, do not engage in that which you have no knowledge pertaining. فَإِذَا لَمْ يَكُنْ عَنْدَكَ عَلْمٌ فَلَا تَتَكَلَّمٍ If you don't have knowledge about a particular affair, don't speak about it. وَلَوْ ضَيْرَ عَلَيْكَ إِنْ خُبْتْ And there is no any ضَيْر upon you, and there is no harm upon you, or no ignominy or humiliation upon you. If you were to say, لا أدري, I don't know. فَإِنَّ مَنْ قَالَ لَا أَدْرِي فَقَدْ سَلِمْ Because the person who says, I don't know, is safe. وَحَذَا فَضِيلًا And this is a merit, it is a virtue for a person, a tremendous virtue. لِأَنَّكَ إِذَا خُضْتَ فِي الْكَلَامِ Because were you to engage in speaking, الْكَلَامِ بِفَيْرِ عَلِمْ الْكِتَابِ عَنِ اللَّهِ وَلَا سُنَّةِ رَسُولِهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ we were engaged in speaking about an affair, and about the religion of Allah Taala, without having something to corroborate what you say, and to verify what you say from the Book of Allah, the Son of the Prophet Sallallahu And the person who has done this has committed a sin, and he has committed something that is a radila, it's the opposite of fadila, the opposite of virtue, something that is a despicable, disgusting behavior. وَقَدْ كَانَ صَحَابَةُ وَلَا إِمَّةُ إِذَا سُئِلُوا عَنْ عَمْرٍ وَلَمْ يَحْبُرْهُمْ عَنْهُ جَوَابٌ صَحِيْتَ وَقَّفُوهُ The companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم ورضي الله عنه وعرضاه ولا إما the imams of the religion whenever they were asked about an affair and they cannot recall the answer for it or they cannot and he formulated a proper response for it تَوَقَّفُوهُ then they would hold off they would pause and they would hold back. And that did not detract anything of their status. It did not remove or lower anything of their status. But rather that is something that increased their nobility and increased their status because they were adamant and serious and fervent upon about being truthful. Here we have the example of the great Imam, the Imam of Darul Hijra, the Imam of Medina, Anas ibn Malik ibn Anas, radiyallahu anhu, was asked about 40 issues of the religion. The person asked him, came from a far distance. 
and he only answered four of forty questions. And he said about the other thirty-six, I don't know. And he said, I came from very far. I came from very far away. And I exhausted my riding animal. And you're going to tell me you don't know. He said, yeah. Get back on your riding animal and go back home. Malik, and then tell them I asked Malik. And he said, I don't know. He said, this statement of Imam Malik that I don't know raises his status. The proof of that is that we're talking about it right now. Right? Well over I mean, a thousand plus years, I mean, twelve hundred plus years or whatever. I mean, from the time of Imam Malik, rahmatullahi alayhi, I mean, the reality of the affair is that Allah raised the status of Malik for saying, I don't know. And then he became an example. And Allah exalted his position amongst the Muslims. And he raised up his status amongst the people. And the people started to mention this incident with Imam Malik out of respect for Imam Malik. فَالْحَاصِلُ عَنَ الْقَوْلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ وَمِنْ أَكْبَرِ الْكَبَائِرِ فَلْيَحْذَرَ الْمُسْلِمُ مِنْ ذَلِكِ He said, and in summary, speaking about Allah with our knowledge is from the greatest of major sins, so the Muslim has to be cautious and safeguard himself, protect himself from falling into that. And another incident, perhaps the same incident, perhaps a different incident, Imam Malik, he was asked, about an issue, and he said, I don't know. He said, I don't know. And the person, he said, in response to Imam Malik, he said, Innaha mas'alatun khafifatun sahala. So it's a light issue, it's an easy issue. If you don't know it's a light, easy, it's an issue. It's an easy issue. But still, it's causing cause him to become very upset to the point that you could physically see in his countenance and his face of his anger. And he said, it's not so seen as something light in the religion. Haven't you heard the statement of Allah? We are going to cast down upon you and our greatness on Muhammad a weighty word. There's nothing light in Islam. There's nothing light in Islam. It's a light issue so you can just talk all willy nilly about something, right? Allah Akbar. He said, وَأَمَّا الْآيَةُ الَّتِي أَوْرَدَهَا الْمُصَرِفُ رَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ فِي أَوَّلِ هَذَا الْبَابِ As for the verse that the author mentions in the beginning of this chapter, which is the statement that we heard, the speech of Allah Ta'ala, wa ta'ala قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَحَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنَ الْآيَةَ This verse, he said, الْفَوَاحِشْ جَمْعُ فَاحِشَ Then the things that I mentioned in it are as follows. And al-fawahish is the plural of fahisha, wa hiya al-ma'asiyat al-mutanahiya fi al-qubh. And al-fahisha is any act of disobedience that is at the highest level of reprehensibility. I and mean, it's something that is loathsome. I and mean, it's something that people loathe and that they're repulsed by. Ma dhahara minha wa ma bata. And think about just, you know, a generation or two ago, even in the lines of disbelief, things like homosexuality, things like adultery, things like having children outside of wedlock, any issues that people take to take lightly today, issues that I any mean, if you have old traditional values, if you have I any mean, old the, the old way of understanding then you're old fashioned, you're not with the times and there's something wrong with your mind and so on and so forth. Just a generation or two ago, in the 60s and the 50s and before, and before the counterculture revolution and, and these sorts of things happened in this country, people were embarrassed to have children out of wedlock. People were embarrassed to have children out of wedlock. There were people who would have children out of wedlock and they would leave their children at the doorstep of an orphanage or the doorstep of a hospital or so on and so forth because it was such a stigma in a society that you would have a child without having a husband. Right? Things have become, as we see, Wallahu al-Musta'an, that shamelessness 
has become widespread throughout the earth. Otherwise, any fornication, adultery, homosexuality, these things are fahisha, they're mutanahiya fil qubh, at the highest level of reprehensibility. This is something that we have to check ourselves about because we become desensitized, right? Being here, we become desensitized, right? And people having access to electronic devices, so on and so forth, and he letting their eyes run loose to look at whatever they want to look at, it's a calamity. So al is that which is mutanahi and al that which is at the epitome, the highest level, the farthest extent of reprehensibility. And in ma lahara minha wa ma batan, that which is public and that which is private of it. Ma lahara lil nas min al fawahish wa ma batan minha bain al abdi wa bain wa bain Allah. And in that which is public to the people of al fawahish and that which is private, that is between a slave and Allah Taala, فكله سواب and it's all the same Allah has forbidden all of فعلى الإنسان أن يتجنب الفواحش في كل أحواله سواء كان بين الناس أو كان خاليا so it's upon the person to abstain from lewd behavior no matter what the situation whether he is public in front of the people or whether it is something where he is private all by himself in seclusion in Allah لا يخفى عليه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء because nothing is ambiguous or hidden to Allah in the heavens or in the earth لأن بعض الناس يتبرع إذا كان يراه أحد من الناس some of the people are more cautious if they are being watched by somebody فيتجنب ما لا يليق به and they may abstain from and stay away from which is inappropriate إذا ما قال بنفسه تجرع على المعاصي as for when he is by himself and he has a jura, he has the audacity to commit acts of disobedience. And in reality, this person is afraid of the people and is not afraid of Allah. He is afraid of the people, he is not afraid of Allah. Uh, in the hadith, and he, it, it, the Messenger of Allah said, some advice to fear Allah no matter where you may be. Ibn Rajab al-Hamdulillah in his book Jami uh, al-Ulum al-Hikam he mentions he said that it was revealed to a previous prophet it was said that it was revealed to a previous prophet to say to his people Ayyuhan nas lima ja'altu muni ahwan al-nadhirina ilaykum O people why have you made me the least significant one that is looking at you why have you made me the least important the least significant one 
that is watching you. He said, so a person who is like that, who has audacity when he is by himself, this person in reality, if he wouldn't act like that in front of the people, when he acts like that when he is all by himself, and this person does not, he is afraid of the people, but he is not afraid of Allah. Because the one who fears Allah in reality is the one who fears Him, whether He is private or whether He is public. He fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the unseen. He fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He is by Himself and when He is being witnessed by the people. And in the private and in public. Allah ta'ala, Allah exalted be He the Most High, said, Inna ladina yakshawna rabbahum min ghayb. Verily, those who have knowledge based fear of their Lord and the unseen, and when they are alone, they will have forgiveness and a tremendous reward from Allah. That's for sin, then what is meant by it is all acts of disobedience because it leaves a uh, humiliating mark upon the person who does it. وَالْبَلِي وَتَعَدِّي عَلَى النَّاسِ لِمَاهِهِمْ وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ أَوْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ أَوْ أَرَاضِهِمْ He said, as for al-bali, that it is to transgress against the people pertaining their lives, pertaining their property, or pertaining their honor or reputation. فَالْبَلِي haram, And he committing transgression in such a way is haram. It's haram pertaining the Muslim, it's haram pertaining the non-Muslim. They can be against them pertaining their lives, their property, or their honor. ثُمَّ قَالَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ Then Allah said, without a right. أَمَّا إِذَا كَانَ ذَلِكَ قَصَاسًا فَهُوَ حَقِّ He said, as for when it is done out of qasas, any out of uh, uh, retribution through the proper legal channels and so on and so forth, that vigilante justice. And he said, فَهُوَ حَقِّ and it is correct, and he, if a person, and he takes his right because somebody has, and he violated his honor, or violated his property, or violated his life, or these sorts of things. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ سَيِّئَةٌ مِثْلُهَا And he said, the reward of an, or the recompense, the repayment of an infraction is an infraction that is similar to it. وَالْقَاتِلُ يَقْتُلُ يُقْتَلُ قَصَاسًا so, for example, a person commits murder, they are executed by the proper legal authority in a Muslim man, and he for out of uh, retribution. As for the statement of Allah, exalted be the Most High, and that you are forbidden from making shirk with Allah, this is from the greatest, or it is the greatest forbidden affair. Just as Tawheed is the greatest obligation and duty. And he shirk with Allah is that you make a partner with Allah in worship. Like summoning and calling upon others besides Allah. Or seeking deliverance and rescue from others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only that which Allah has the ability to do. Or slaughtering or taking oaths upon other than Allah Taala or for other than Allah. All of these affairs are included in a shirk billah. Because worship is the sole right of Allah. And none are befitting to share with him in a right. وَقَوْلُهُ مَا لَنْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا As regards the statement of Allah as regards and he, that, you make, that you are forbidden for making shirk with Allah and that which Allah has revealed no authority for and he was meant by sultan is hujjah and burhan and he evidence and proof for and there is no valid argument and proof in defense of shirk فَاللَّهُ تَعَالَى لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ حُجَّةً لِلْمُشْرِكِ أَبَدًا Allah has never ever sent down a argument to uh, justify what the mushrik is falling into a shirk. وَبِخِلَافَ الْمُوَحِّدِ 
فإن عنده سلطانا وبرحانا وحجة على توحيد الله تعالى Contrary to the Muwahid, the person of Tawheed, he has the greatest evidence. He has the greatest authority, evidence and argument to establish for the oneness of Allah, the uniqueness of Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, the Tawheed of Allah, monotheism as regards Allah, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. وَأَمَنْ مُشْرِكُ فَلَيْسَ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا شُبُحَاتِ وَالْخُرَافَاتِ As for the mushrik, then all he has are doubts and superstitions. التي يتعلق بها that he finds himself connected to في حين نرى في في حين في في حين نرى أن التوحيد براهنه ظاهرة وجانية في الوح المنزل وفي الكون المشاهد ولله الحمد والمنة at the same time we find that the evidence is for a توحيد that they are very clear and they are unmistakable within the revealed revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within the revealed scripture from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and within the universe itself the evidences for Tawheed are found all throughout and all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is the bestower of all blessings or that you say about Allah that which you do not do this is the shahid the Witness here, point of reference here. This is the point of reference here, meaning that you are not to say about Allah what you have no knowledge about. A biduni dalini wa meaning that which has no evidence and has no knowledge that is based upon. And this is general as regards the prohibition of speaking about religious affairs without certainty. Without what? Without certainty. This is from that which Allah has forbidden. And He has prohibited His slaves from approaching because of the mafasid that are entailed there and the corruption and evils and harms that are found therein. It is not therefore befitting for a Muslim or permissible rather for a Muslim to say what he does not know. And he is for the person who doesn't know something to be silent and not speak about that which he is not certain about it doesn't know. And it is for him to not and he fabricate something or make up something about. Because Allah has not charged him with the responsibility of that which is beyond his scope and his ability. He says, so whenever you are asked about an issue that you don't know the answer to, and either you delay responding until you look it up and find the answer so that you can respond with knowledge, or either you refer it to others besides yourself who are more knowledgeable than you, at that point you will be in a state of afiyah. You will be spared from calamity. And this is where we conclude before the salah. Wa sallam. Wa barakah ala Muhammad.